Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Monitor Your Health. Today, we will be talking on family planning. It's important for us to understand this topic. Um, I know we have a guest who will be, who will be analyzing everything to, you know, to us today. My name remains Dr. Femi Okunremi, and I have with me in the studio uh, Dr. Idowu Adeoju who is a gynecologist, but he will be introducing himself in a second. You're very, very much welcome, Dr. Adeojo. Thank you for having me. Uh, Please. I'm Dr. Um, Pius Idowu Adeojo. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist, and gynecologist with the Kitty State University Teaching Hospital, Ado Ekit, and also a lecturer in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. University, Ekiti State University, Adrik. Thank you. Good morning, our viewers. Thank you so much for giving us your time uh, to be here today. And uh, we look forward to learning a lot from you on this topic. Uh, family planning is a very important topic. We know for, you know, um, uh, for our family, basically. But for us to understand this, I think we will, we will hand it over to you to tell us what is actually family planning. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Um, family planning has been with us for many years. And uh, even record of family planning has been reported even before Christ that people have one way or the other have been planning, I mean, planned a family. And uh, the WHO in 1971 actually defines family planning as a way of thinking and living, a way of thinking and living that is adopted voluntarily. That means the family planning is part of us, the way of thinking a way of living in a way that uh, you are able to bring up a family that you can take that for so a way that is adopted, adopted voluntarily and based on technology, science, and information in order for us to be able to promote healthy living among families and to bring families that will contribute to social development of any nation. So it is obvious that family planning has been a practice that has old as human beings. And uh, every, uh, we have different things to prove that even as long, as long as before Christ, people have been planning their family, though initially primitive, until we now have the onset of the modern family planning methods. And we now, um, we are now practice now. Right. Thank you so much for that uh, definition. So, uh, family planning has been with us right from the time in memoria from your, you know, um, uh, analysis just now. Why? Why is it important? Why? What's the benefits? Why? Why do we need to to actually have this? Or why is it that it's been with us for so long? Really. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, we will know that as long as uh, 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 during the, the I mean, Charles Darwin has propounded a theory of uh, evolutionary, um, I mean, evolutionary theory by Darwin, I mean, Charles Darwin. Uh, uh, although a, a genetist referring to um, the law of natural I mean, uh, fitness, survival of the fittest. Looking into the world as a place where there will be competition, even at the level, at the cellular level, at the level of the genetics, there, there will be competition. That the strong will overwhelm and overtake the, those ones that are weak. And uh, from economics point of view, we also refer to the work done by the Malthusian theory of development. Mathers, in his own, uh, uh, propounded the theory of uh, 
I mean, we tend to propound the theory that tells us that uh, the population of the world is growing at a geometric rate, whereas the food production is growing at arithmetic progression. At the time we come, that there will be too many people who, for the food that will be available. And as a result of this, we can have a lot of competition, strife, wars, people trying to eliminate themselves. So the population, in order for us to be able to look at the, the Malthusian theory and just oppose it with that of Charles Darwin, then we will know that it is it's important for us not to get to a state which the world has already got into. Because now the world population is almost about 7.8 about billion. In Africa, we are about 1.3 billion. And then from progression in Nigeria, Nigeria is already 26 million. And when you look at all those countries where the population are high, particularly where the, the fertility rate is very high, um, because there are some countries that their fertility rate, the world fertility rate is about 2.1. But in Nigeria, our fertility rate is about 5.3. And we have some countries where they have high fertility rates. And in these countries, just take note that these countries, they have a lot of social unrest, a lot of problems in those countries. We're talking of Burundi, Somalia, the countries where the fertility rate is high. And I just think, in my own opinion, when you think about that people can continue to give back, then you don't value those ones that are there because you know they can continue to replenish uh, the people. So as a result of this, we know that the benefit, the, there is an inherent benefit of pan family planning that has been that has been recognized even from primary memory for us to be able to contain to be able to, I mean, the prediction of Matthews, for us to be able to at least guard against the prediction of Matthews, because some people are criticized as the prophet of doom. But we yeah. see what implosion in the rate of population is doing to our nation. So there is a lot of benefit to the world. There is benefit of uh, family planning to individuals. For instance, let us take the woman, for instance. There is what we call obstetric risk. There are some risks, obstetric risks that we know that women are exposed to because of childbirth. When you are too young, you are too old, you are having frequent delivery, too many deliveries. These are identified risk, obstetric risk that women are exposed to. And if a woman continues to give birth, for so many, I mean, too many, giving birth to too many children, then you are going to have a lot of problems, uh. even on the health of the woman. Maternal mortality, the rate of maternal mortality is also, I mean, it's also directly proportional to the number of children. The less the number of children you have, the less the probability of a woman dying from childbirth. So we will see that at the level of individual. It's also very, very important. What of the man as the man in the family? We know that uh, your ability to climb the ladder of success depends on how many dependents you are. The more you are, the more heavy you are to be able to climb up for the ladder of success. Mm. So when you, when you, and it's even this factor is also further compounded in our African society where we have this extended family, even before you start giving birth, you already have a lot of dependents. You have your parents, you have your, a lot of people, they call you, they are your children from your brother, cousins, all of them are children that you're already responsible. But for you to now climb up on the ladder of success, if you are not careful, the more you have, the more heavy you become. So to even the man, and the family. So to be able to protect the health of the family, the family planning becomes a great benefit. Put off to the country. It gives us an opportunity to be able to plan. The more the country is planning for, the worse. A, a, that is why you can begin to compare the developing nation and the developed nation. You can also look, and look, look at it from the statistics of the number of children or the number of like, births that they are. It's also proportional to the prosperity of a nation. So the population, if you are not able to control the population 
and you can only control it. If you don't con control the population through tag bars, then you will control it through war and strife. And that is what you are. When the population is in a particular region, you discover after some time they will begin to eliminate themselves. So they are controlling the population. But if the population can be controlled through family planning, the well structured family planning, then you will reduce strife, you will reduce war, famine will reduce. Such that all these people don't control it at this stage, there is some other disaster will control it. And that is why we, we advocate. Um, it looks like we lost Dr. Ado, uh, Dr. Adeojo a bit there. We just um, wait a little bit. So we're talking about family planning, and then we have Dr. Pius Ado you know, Adeojo. Now, as we move on into discussion, that uh, you look at it, we're able to take care of your children. Okay. All right, thank you so much. So now we, we now know that you know family planning is essential, you know, to humanity. It's important for you know at all spheres and level, uh, from individual to a community to a nation to the world at 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 large, uh, based on your analysis just now. So, if this is the, if it's this important, what are the what are the types or how? How do we go about it? Because that'd be the question in the mind of our people at home. Yes, we know that is important, but how? What do we do? How do we do it? What are the peculiarities and things? Can we go into, into, the, into, into this uh, discussion? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, um, like, I, like I said before, even before the, we have this, um, the modern medicine, the orthodox medicine, we have had a family plan. So we can divide the family planning into two broad types. We have the traditional family planning and we have the modern methods of family planning. Right. And then we will, I will be discussing more on the modern methods of family planning because that is actually our major concern. And I'm sure that is the major concern of the uh, monitor your health. And uh, because uh, the traditional method, we know, they are definitely not reliable, not right. reproducible, and uh, they are just attached to the culture of the people, which we cannot generalize. But the modern methods of family planning, majorly we have some, and uh, the types, we have so many types of family planning that you should be able to choose one from. So there is no way that if this one is not suitable for me, uh, I get that. Definitely, if one is not suitable for you, you have the one that you can pick. And uh, um, let me talk about the, I mean, the, in, in this, the, there are so many ways of classifying the family planning, but the right. same uh, classification I've just give us, uh, we have the long acting reversible contraception. Okay. And again, before I continue, I want to just draw a distinction between family planning and and, and contraception. Okay. There's a okay. difference between family planning and contraception. Right. Family, you, you do contraception to achieve family planning. Right. Contraception are things you do to achieve family planning. Whereas family planning is the actual, I want to, I want to regulate the size of my family. I want to space the number of children I have. I want to be res take responsibility for my sexual um, uh, for my sexual act. So, and uh, I do. I want to at the same time be able to limit the number of children I have. So, we have the long acting reversible contraception. We call those one lack long acting reversible contraception. The longer acting reversible contraception are those ones that we can use for a good period of time, particularly if you want to have a good number between the beds. Um, you can have a long acting that can last you for three years, five years, or even more. And uh, uh, among the long acting reversible contraceptive, we have the intrauterine devices. 
uh, some of us are used to intellectual contra I mean uh, contraceptive device uh, like copper tea. I will generally call it anyway. But there are so many types of the IUD that intrauterine devices. There are so many types. Property is just one of them, but usually a lot of our people so they refer to it as property property. And then that one is inserted into the into the uterus, and then it can last there from five years to ten years, depending on the type of the uh, intrauterine contraceptive device that is fixed. Then we have we also have the implant as long-acting uh, reversible contraception because they are reversible. When you remove them, then the woman can get pregnant again. So for those people who are still desirous of pregnancy, but they want to stay away for a very long time, then they can use the long-acting reversible contraception device. Then the implant, we have the, majorly we have the Jardel the implant. No, we, we used to use no plant in business, but no longer uh, in the market. Because uh, of some of the side effects, so we have been able we have reduced better. I mean, um, implants with a better profile, like the Jadel and implant no. And uh, aside from the long-acting reversible contraceptive device, we also have the hormonal contraceptive device. I mean, agents. Right. And uh, this one we include oral pills, um, oral contraceptive pills, and the progesterone only pills that uh, the women will have to take on daily. Is, uh, we have the fertility awareness method. And the fertility awareness method are actually those ones that are good for some um, maybe religion, um, religious organization. Some of them, they don't believe in using drugs. Then the fertility awareness is also one of those that we can, then we can let them know that they can use. That is knowing the period that you are most fertile and avoiding having sex at that time. Although the problem we had, I mean, at those period, the major problem we have in the fertility awareness is that uh, it is not very, very reliable, but it can also be practice fertility awareness. Then we also have the barrier methods of contraception. The barrier methods we include the use of condom, where the both the male, the female condom, the different types of condom, something that can be a barrier between the sperm going inside. And, that. and also we have the, um, the, the other type of family planning, very prominent that we also have is the permanent family planning. The permanent family planning is not very, very acceptable to us, particularly in this part of the world that people have a lot of reservation against the permanent family planning and uh, because they believe it requires surgery and uh, they're going to uh, tamper with a part of the body. So a lot of our women, even our men, they run away from permanent family plan. But for those who have completed their family and who think that they don't, there's no reason for them to get pregnant again, the permanent family planning method, the permanent method is actually the best for them. And this one will include the tubal ligation, bilateral tubal ligation, Method we can do ligation, we can do tubal occlusion, and then plus we are just trying to create a barrier to the fallow plant. And also, vasectomy, also another form of a permanent uh, uh, family planning. Uh, those one we call the permanent, the, the permanent in code is reversible, but what I mean is not, I mean, it's relative. However, we know that a reversal is usually not uh, uh, very, very uh, successful. Even when, even if you reverse successfully, it does not translate that that woman is going to get pregnant again. So those who have been issued, they will usually tell the women that uh, you may not be able to get pregnant after the permanent. Uh, so these are the there are different uh, ways because uh, even there are a lot of innovation into these family planning methods that uh, we have a lot that are very very user friendly. That people can pick on their own on the shelf, but there are some that we know that definitely you need to make a contact with the uh, the family planning provider. So these are the, we have different methods that people can come without any issue. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Adeojo. So we 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 now know that obviously for variety of um, you know situations or you know whatever we are. 
there are options out there. So there's no excuse not to have one. That's what we're saying. And then you, 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 you run through quite a number. You talked about the nature, right? You talked about, you know, um, the barrier method. You talked about the oral, the, uh, uh, the, the insertions and, um, you know, talk about the lack, which is the long acting one. And then uh, those ones that we can, you know, use intermittently. Now, we, I, I didn't think I heard you talk about things like implanon. Uh, or something that somebody can insert in their arm. Is that is that option still available, or are we out of that? Because there might be people out there be thinking, "This is what I have. Is it obsolete or not?" No, no. I mentioned it. The oh, yeah, I missed implant, it. I no. Yeah, I missed okay. it. Okay, mentioned as implants. Yes. Okay, I missed. Okay, that. implants yes. is okay. is one of the long acting. Yeah. Uh, reversible contraceptive devices, I mean, methods, lack. Okay. So the implants okay. are still there. What I said is that the no plan that we used to know before is already phased out. So right. most of the one we have, we have the implanol, and then we have the Janel. Okay. The, the implanol is there for, I mean, can last for three years, the Janel for five years. So I mentioned okay. all those ones. All right, thank you so much. So for somebody who is now thinking, who is waiting out there looking at, okay, he's talked about all these things, uh and i want them i want i'm thinking i want to have family planning you know uh we go one form of family planning or the other what are the things i need to be mindful of or what are the things that would be of concern when when i'm picking and choosing this way uh, are there things that they need to know as a public i mean the, i mean the public yeah, thank you very much as much as possible we want the, the choice of family planning to be dependent on the mm. clients. We want the client to have a lot of say. Most of the time, the clients will come to you and they ask you, Doctor, who for this family planning do you think is good for me? Give me the one that you think is good for me. But usually we tell them, please, we want you to have a say and a choice in the family planning method. And that is why we go through a series of counseling. Right. For them to be able to make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. Because we want them to make informed decision and pick the best that, it, that will be suitable for them. Because uh, right. what I think is suitable for you may not actually be suitable for you. It depends on you to know which one will I be able to manage. For instance, mm -hmm. if somebody is very forgetful, you cannot ask that person to be taking oral contraceptive pill every day. They will forget and you can run into problems. So if somebody does not like uh, taking injection, you cannot advise that person to take injectable contraceptive because right. that one day the woman will run away from taking the injection and that will be a problem. So we want the, the women, the client, to be able to initiate. And uh, there are some things, uh, maybe uh, there are a lot of uh, media problems with, uh, with the family planning or peer group pressure. People will tell you that I've taken this, it's causing this one. But, most of the time, you want people to let their own knowledge be based on what they know. Sure. For instance, most a lot of information are there on the internet. Now people can read a lot about some of these things. Mm. So most and then when you consult us as family planning provider, we want to give you good information. We do give you materials to read about the family planning. When you make your choice and now adapt that your choice to your own peculiar situation. And uh, as a, a matter of um, good practice, we try to ensure that those one and uh, our people on family planning, they are also linked to the other component of reproductive health. Okay. For instance, so, if somebody is on yeah. the IUCD or any, okay. Carry on, carry on, carry on. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Sorry. sorry. Okay. Carry on. For instance, if somebody is on uh, um, on contraceptive, we also want that person to be aware that you should also take care of the other part of your own reproduction, regular pap smear, because there are some of these. Uh, don't let us forget that some of this family planning, we are also introducing something from outside. So some of the side effects that we think we have, we don't really have some all these side effects, but um, but where there has been a lot of uh, issues, people accepting family planning based on what others have said. However, mm. 
let us take the person as an individual. For instance, if, if somebody is on yeah, in the Omuna family planning, for instance, or on any form of family planning, we still want the woman to take care of the breast examination care because mm -hmm. either you are on family planning or you are not on family planning. You can have bre a long breast, breast in your lung. You can have cancer of the breast. It does not depend on whether you are using family planning or not. But particularly those of family planning is an opportunity for them to introduce them to all that component of reproductive care. Regular pap smear, yeah. that they should do regular pap smear, they should monitor their weight, which I mean management yeah. of obesity, keeping them in shape for the money. Yeah. Because a lot of them will tell us that, oh, I'm paying fat because I'm taking one family planning or the other. But we know there's a family plan that have a tendency to increase weight. But the increment in weight right. is so not important in the discussion to now say that their family planning method is not good. So everybody, we want to, the people that are choosing family planning method, they should be properly counseled. You don't want people, if you want to choose a family planning method, please, we advise people to not just go over the counter to pick up a family planning method. Mm -hmm. We need to get across to a family planning provider. We could be a right. gynecologist, the nurses, the nurses are trained to provide family planning. All doctors, there's no doctor that cannot be a good family planning provider. So, but you have to put them through counseling. I'm sure a lot of my colleagues, they are aware of the old teaching of Ghana that we use, you greet them, you explain to them, you ask them questions, you help them to pick in this thing and you want them to also still return back because we have a responsibility to continue to take care of the reproductive yes. IS. So we take the woman and the client holistically. Thank you so much. Now, in a situation where uh, somebody is, um, you know, uh, contemplating uh, taking, you know, family planning, and then they decide that, look, I'm not sure about the side effect. I'm not sure what's going on. And they choose to use maybe the, the hard hoc, you know, uh, uh, reproductive method, more like people using uh, maybe morning after, after sex or whatever, you know, morning after pill or whatever we call it uh, as, as a form of contraception. Is this something that is encouraged? Is this something that is acceptable? Uh, or what advice do we want to give, you know, our women out there? Thank you very much. Uh, when I was actually highlighting the different types of family planning, I think I forgot to mention the emergency contraception. And that's what you're referring to. Um, thank you very much. The emergency contraception are actually supposed to be for those who are not on family planning, or have problem with their family planning, maybe they forget to use this and that, or they have a, a, a they just stumble on sexual intercourse and they don't want to get pregnant. And it's for them to just take temporary. And then we advise people in this category that uh, they should continue to make up their mind. If you, you use money, uh, after I mean, money after pill, for instance, then that means you don't want to get pregnant. And if you are in that category, then the best thing is for you to not make up your mind to continue thereafter. Uh, because uh, the, uh, depending on the, for instance, somebody that is married, not be taking money after. The money after pill are particularly meant for those maybe they're not married or they just had the, I mean, the casual sexual intercourse and they want to get pregnant. So for those of them who now see themselves in need of family planning, then they should make up their mind to enter into the family planning program proper so that they can be on one, I mean, one form of family planning or the other can be provided for them. So we are not advocating money after pill. As a regular method of family planning, this this Okay, thank you so much. So, um, are there are there? I know you've mentioned some of the some of the side effects. You talk about the weight. You talk about are there other things that that ladies need to be aware, depending on on on, on you know 
whatever methods they are taking. Are there side effects of importance that they need to be aware? That's one, maybe we'll go into that one, then i ask the second question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, there's no thing that you can drop that does not have side effects. Mm. But that is what makes it drug or any form of any intervention have side effects. Even water, drinking water has no side effect. If you read through the side effect of paracetamol, you won't put paracetamol in your mouth again. I think it's, we should be doing it in form of analyzing the risk and benefit. Look at it. Is the risk and the risk of getting pregnant? Does it outweigh the benefit? So you look at the contraception you want to do. I want to do a contraception. I don't want to get pregnant. Then pregnancy. Then you now assess your own risk. With the risk of pregnancy, will it outweigh all the, the side effects? If you think that the benefit of the of not getting pregnant outweighs the risk of the side effects, it's better we embrace this because there's no nothing that you call anything, anything that has in form of drug or anything, even the IUCD, they have their own side effects. Uh, there are so many of these contraceptive methods, and uh, given the side effects, I mean, the outside the scope of it, because uh, if you pick IUCD that can increase the, I mean, menstruation, it can begin to bleed more, and also prone, I mean, predispose them to more infection. For instance, women on IUCD, we advise them that uh, they should have a, I mean, a, 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 a mutually uh, agreeable this between the husband and wife, such that uh, you want to eliminate multiple sexual partners because the IUC or as a foreign body can expose the woman to infection. We can also uh, we take the the ones the hormonal agents that we do. They have some of those side effects, but the side effects most of the side effects that we see, mm. they are not side effects that we happen to one person. Okay. Most of the side effects that is documented for them, they are constellation of side effects that we happen to individuals and you put them together. So yeah. if you, a lot of people will be on, on this and they will not have any problem. Some people will have, but the problem I have most of the time in my practice uh, of family planning is that uh, the moment you provide the family planning for a client, anything that happens to that client is referred to that family plan. <laughs> the ask fever. They will come and tell you that it's your family plan that's causing the fever. Uh -huh. they, they will make sure they will tell you, they will tell you that it's your family plan that is causing the fever. They will ask that you are using family planning does not mean that you cannot have any other problem that you have been even having before the family planning. So the side effect, most of the time we sit down with them to analyze the side effect. And most of the side effects people talk about, they are not even consequential as to debar them from using one method of the family plan or the other. It's only the convenience. I also need to have. Yeah. Right, so I think we might have. Um... associated with one family planning that you don't get pregnant. And we need to emphasize. And at times, we need to also tell our women that they should use the family planning according to the prescription. That is right. the way we use, and that is the way that it is prescribed. At times, for instance, peace, people on peace, you should be taking your peace around the same time of the day. And that's why I say it's people that are not motivated cannot use peace. So you should be taking, if you want to be taking it like 9 a.m. every day, will you be motivated to ensure that you take it at that time? And if because if you miss it, you can have problems. So there are some users failure and some method failure. So failure that occurred as a result of the way the person is using it. Is different from the method failure. The method failure rate is very low, but the user's failure is higher than the method failure. The method failure means that you are using it the way that has been prescribed by the manufacturer. So the the but the side effects are so low when you use the modern method of contraception. Those ones that has high failure rate and those ones that we be talking about will be the natural method of family planning. But those, the modern methods of family planning, they have relatively very good safety profile. Thank you so much. Very good safety profile and no failure rates. All right. 
Thank you so much for that uh, in-depth uh, analysis of the <clears throat> various side effects that we have. Now, <clears throat> let's go in the next maybe five minutes. We have a few questions from the guests and the, and, the, and the public. So I'm just going to go through them one after the other so that we can address this one and why we'll round up this uh, you know, uh, discussion this morning. So the first question is how can we get uh, women to understand the importance of family planning? I thought we'd talk about that, but I'll leave that to you maybe in about half, an, half a minute to talk about it because of the time we have to push a bit uh, quicker now. So um, how can we get women to understand the importance of family planning? Thank you very much. We need a lot of advocacy. And we need government to come in and have a direct policy. The only policy yeah. that we can that relate to family planning that I knew I'm aware of was when the General Babangida said that we should have four children to one woman. And again, maybe that is what is driving our fertility rate of 5.3 mm -hmm. in Nigeria now. Because when you look at four to one, reduce it to 5.3, you know that it's a little bit. So that means a pronouncement. But the problem is that what of a man that has four wives, that means he's entitled to 16 children. So that means we need right. to review our policy. We need to look at mm -hmm. the policy. And we need a lot of advocacy. There are a lot of media propaganda in this family planning. A lot of peer yeah, pressure um, orchestrated the attempt to destroy family planning. Somebody is telling you that uh, this is what the family plan is causing for me. And you are listening to that person. What of, have you, do you have a personal experience? Because that's what the question I usually ask. Do you have any personal experience to tell me that that is what this family plan is making you not to use? Okay. So that means we need a lot of advocates. Women should know that when they engage in family planning, they are protecting themselves, they are protecting other existing children, protecting their husband, they are protecting the family, the community, the society, the nation, and the whole world. Like I've said, if we don't control family planning and we don't control our population at the level of family planning, family, war, strife, we are supposed to control it. And all of us, we don't want that. So let us begin to look at the government should redirect their effort. Even in Nigeria, we, we, know, we know the segment of Nigeria that has so much problem because of population. So we need to look at how to control this. If you call it, because the government decides to come there. And we, most of the African nations, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, we don't have a policy document, a blueprint for family yeah. planning. Yeah. There is, it's just that we don't enforce it. Okay, so the next question is for single women, what do we tell them? Which is preferable? I have seen a situation where people use the barrier method and still get pregnant, considering abstinence is relative. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, we don't, in, in considering family planning, in considering family planning, we talk of abstinence. But in contraception, we don't talk of abstinence. Mm -hmm. Because abstinence is very difficult to preach to adults. And uh, because it is uh, the level of where we can continue to talk of abstinence, OK, at interpersonal level, abstain from sex, uh, be faithful, all those ones. But abstaining, abstinence as a form of family plan is difficult. You can ask husband and wife to abstain. And if we are talking of single women, it depends on their reproductive requirement. What do they want? What do they need? Are you married if you, if you are a single and you are not married? Then we need to begin to be talking in terms of abstinence to them at that level because you are not married. Wait no sex. Wait until you are married. This is where we can preach. And we need to encourage our single women to actually run away from what in a where, where in a situation where a single lady choose that I really want to have sex. I'm sorry, I use the word S. It shouldn't, it's maybe inappropriate now, but I want to have S, X, X, okay? But I'm not married. What do we advise as a, as a professional? Are we going to say abstinence or do we have uh, an option for them from the family planning, you know, perspective? Yes, definitely we have options for them. And we have options for them. Their option 
like I said, all the method of family planning that are available can be used, but with a lot of caution when it comes to, because some of them, they will still get married and have children. Uh, we don't, we don't accept where it becomes impractical. We don't want to preach things like IUCD, intellectual and contraceptive device for single ladies because of the possibility of increased so, but if they, if they are, you're, you're okay, you're single and you want to have sex, all that method of family planning, we have the career method, but we know that that one is also not very reliable. We have like the use of condom, we have the male condom, we have the female condom, the failure rate is up to 25%, which is uh, so high, as to continue to take that risk. But let us also note that even for single women, we still advise them so well on the barrier method of contraception yeah. because it has a dual function. It yeah. protects against both pregnancy and sexually transmis transmitted infection and sexually transmissible infection. So we advocate in them the use of the barrier method, particularly the male condom. Male condom is also good in that respect. So for single women, they can make do with the other, the other thing is that you're also not, although I don't know the level of uh, the frequency of sexual intercourse that is obtainable in this particular group, but if they use the condom the way it should be used, then it has a lot of advantage in getting them. But if you know that uh, you may not, yeah, the, uh, maybe the frequency of sex is much and you need, you cannot contain it with emergency contraception, and then with barrier method, then the Omona method can also still be used in them. And uh, there are reasons for us to have used even I, I, I use IUD for a lady who had had repeated abortion. So we didn't want her to kill herself in having abortion fourth time and not yet married. So it, it depends, the, 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 the professionals will make up their mind on that. But again, I need to emphasize a lot of our system of health system now does not allow the adolescents, I mean, it's not adolescent friendly. So we don't have a lot of these young, uh, young ladies coming, assessing provider for counseling. Um, is that not um, the problem? Isn't that the big problem in our society? Because, very you, yeah, that would not stop, you know, these young people still going about doing these things. And the trouble that I think we're going to have there is the fact that these people will be coming either pregnant, and then you'll be just like you mentioned now, you'll be having recurrent you know, abortions, or uh, and a lot of them will even go to the quacks, and they will be leading to increasing in you know people's life uh, being taken. So, isn't it? I mean, I I I, I want to agree with you. I know I, I jumped into your discussion, and I'm sorry about it, but I think this is a very important aspect of this discussion when we talk about the singles, when we talk about people who are vulnerable because there are people who by virtue of their situation they might be they might have learning this difficulty people might be taking advantage of them it's not something that we're actually you know uh clamoring for but it happens so in situations like this i think it's good for us to address that what do we do as a professional are we going to just sit our back and say oh um take on these people are not going to use it isn't it better for us to have a structure Pick out of this loop of the numbers of the, you know options that you're giving to us to be able to say okay try this so is that not is that not what I would think makes sense? Yeah, well that's why I said that uh, the area of adolescent reproductive health is a serious gap in our ethical delivery, which we need to address. Uh, because like you have said, we need to capture this group of people. Because these are the people that are going to become adults tomorrow. And uh, at this level, they are exposed to a lot of conflict issues, identification issues, a lot of problems that can be a real issue for them in the future. We need to create, bridge this gap. And that is where, as professionals, we need a lot of advocacy. We need a lot of to create awareness. And that is one part of the good work you guys are doing. 
So adolescent reproductive health, we should make sure that we bring it to the front panel so that we can capture, capture this. In fact, a lot of these ladies, what they need is to be given a proper counseling. But mm. usually, there is no common except maybe your parents bring you to the doctor and you cannot be talking and your parents is sitting down with you as, as a young girl. And I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. You know, I understand that. But let's go to the next question so that because there's a lot when we look at the cultural you know, background in our country, because obviously I, I trained in England and this is not the situation. You, know, you can let's go to the next question and then we can just move this. So what, what is the what is the failure rate, failure and success rate of vasectomy? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, vasectomy, the failure rate of vasectomy, I mean the success rate of vasectomy is very high. It's very high, greater than 99 percent. Greater than 99 percent. Wow. And just like a year, the, the, the failure rate is very low. It is 0 0.5. Even some people quote as low as 0 0.1, 0 0.9. It's not quite low. But we know that uh, for obvious reasons, vasectomy yeah. is yeah. not the practice of vasectomy, particularly in our environment, is very low. People okay. Accept it. Even the wife will not even agree going to do vasectomy. <laughs> that has been my experience. <laughs> because that was the next question. How acceptable is vasectomy? So that's been answered now. Then the other question would be: Can you address inter uh, intercurrent illness that can, that could <clears throat> stop women from using contraceptive uh, options? Thank you very much. There are some. Well, I mean, there's some issues, although there's also a way out of some of these. Because I don't want to dwell on some of these here. We are talking about intercurrent illness. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of the intercurrent illness that will make you not to use contraception. We also make it enough for you not to get pregnant. So some of these intercurrent problems will also be enough for you not to get pregnant. So that means we have to individualize. But we do know that uh, if we have patients who are lying blood pressure, for instance, there's some family planning method I want to advise them what to do. For instance, if somebody is um, is having elevated blood pressure, depending mm -hmm. on the control, depending on the control, because if your blood pressure is also well controlled, it does not mean that you cannot use a particular tool. Let, let me emphasize that. But uh, we know that some of these agents uh, we try to um, use them with caution. Right. People that are diabetic also also use some of these the, the method with caution. It's not that uh, they cannot use them. Uh, some who have yeah. a breast history of breast cancer mm. and breast cancer, there are some of these family plan, particularly the hormone agent that we want to also use. That means depending on your provider, you can also and uh, if, for instance, somebody who has you are going on your regular pap smear you are going on your regular breast check you are doing everything that is possible it may not be that absolute that you should just, just advise so uh, like i said i don't uh, want to advance uh, a lot of this for instance somebody who has cancer of the service for instance that person can may not even be able to get pregnant in the first place so if we have some disease that are intercurrent illness that is bad enough to break the use of family planning some of those diseases will also be bad enough that person not to get pregnant. Right. right. So it's relative depends on people to see which this uh, this uh, condition. All right. Thank you. So let me go to that. Will link me straight to this particular question. How can I ensure I do I don't get pregnant during pre-menopausal stage if I'm not on family planning? Thank you very much. The pre-menopausal stage. Uh, the the fertility, we we'll look at it at the fertility potential of a woman. Uh, uh, the fertility um, potential of a woman is maximum at the age of 25. That is where that is important. You are at 100% fertile and fertile at the age of 25. By the time you are 35, it's 50% of the 24 year age. Then when you get to 40, it's almost very low. So in the pre-menopausal stage, 
depending on the number of years we expect to menopause. Okay, around this now environment, we're thinking of menopause at around 52.5 years. So as close to the menopause as the woman, I mean, as the woman gets close to the menopause, the pregnancy this thing will also reduce. Fact that any method of family planning will do well at that stage because your fertility potential is already low. So you just have some uh, an doctor cases of pregnancy or morning at that stage. So the fear should be less, but you should discuss with your provider. The provider will be able to advise you. There are some people you look at their this by the time they are already from 45 and above, you need you begin to wind them off some of these contraceptive methods. So you have to know. Careful, that you don't have any disease. So, by premenopausal, it's easy to actually manage the, uh, the woman who is not desirous of pregnancy. Very easy. Okay. So, mental health and family planning choices. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Let's, are there things we should be considering when we are counseling our patients? From so, yeah, right. mental health and family planning. Family planning. That is also a big issue to the cost. And uh, we know that uh, depending on how we want to assess the mental health of the individual, mm -hmm. um, the family planning, the fear of pregnancy, and also cause of mental health yeah. for a woman. So that means, in a way, you can still manage the mental health of with the family planning may be a way to manage the mental health of a woman. Because we have seen women, because they don't want to get pregnant, their husband is pestering them in the house, they are running away, they have sexual apathy, they're having problems with their sexuality, it can lead to marriage, disarmarital disarmony, separation, all these things. These are issues that is still within the coffee of mental health. So family planning can come to the rescue in some of these cases of mental disease, because uh, you, you know the anxiety that a woman can be, I mean, can undergo because she does not want to get pregnant. So providing family planning can actually be a panacea to some of the stress that women pass through. Because when you go deep into them, this woman that you are managing for depression, go deep into them. Most of these problems may originate from sexual issues mm. that is building up yeah. anxiety to depression. And yeah. so if you are able to undo the sexual issue, you may be able to help that woman. So that means family planning is actually very useful then, in yeah. the mental health palace. Thank you. All right. Thank Although you. we still know that some of them are family planning. Okay, maybe uh, uh, no, carry on, you, carry on, carry on for time. Okay. So and then there are some of the family planning methods that can also cause some anxiety. Some of the women that we have also discussed. For instance, if you are using UCD and you are now having menorrhagia, your menses is so much, you are bleeding so much, that one can also cause because anytime a woman bleeds, your life is a serious problem, then you can begin to develop a lot of anxiety from that. So that means the methods can also cause some anxiety for them. And even the what people say. About the family plan is also a lot of problem. And the, the myth surrounding family planning, what people say around, can also begin to cause some of the problems. And uh, there are some I know the uh, the uh, the mental health practitioner, which I know uh, you are well familiar with. They can also know there are some of these family planning that they need to adjust. And some of them that are on drugs, maybe they are not being treated for one mental disorder or the other. There could be some of those drugs that can interfere with the family plan. And uh, we, we need to actually discuss in terms of the dose. Maybe there are some that we have to adjust the dose or change the method of the family planning entirely. Because there are some of the family planning that can be rapidly metabolized, that can be, that can be broken down because of the drug that they are using to take care of the mental health. So we have to also think in line with that. But we do know that even some people with some mental health problems, they have increased, one of the problems is they have increased libido. And you also need to still prevent them from unwanted 
pregnancy. So a lot of interconnection between the mental health, which can be even from not using it at all, yeah. using it and drugs that you are using that can interfere with the family planning method. Thank you so much. So that's that's been um, quite uh, a lot, a lot, um, a lot of questions. Thank you, uh, viewers. Thank you, Doctor Adiojo. It's been an enlightening, you know, period. Um, we I always target to do like forty minutes of this thing, maximum forty five minutes, but we've run almost running up to an hour now. So only because we have so many questions and people are engaging with this uh, a lot. So thank you so much, the audience and you know our guests in um, here in um, in zoom those ones in facebook uh if you're watching us also on um, youtube we really appreciate you and we appreciate all these questions if you have more questions you can actually you know leave your your comments on our on our, our facebook page or youtube page and you this has been placed around whichever forum your you know for your your joining us this morning uh please subscribe to our, our youtube channel um we'll be getting more of this enlightening uh you know conversation every every saturday 10 to 10 30 or maximum 11 o'clock uh so it's i think this is how far we'll be able to to take today because uh because of the time we might plan to have another session where we can also you know we definitely want to bring dr Adiojo back into the studio to you know to come and enlighten us more on, on, on a lot of these questions that are still boiling uh, out there. Um, to our ladies, I think it's very important, you know, we do this purely to educate you, to enlighten you, to enlighten people, not only ladies, even everyone, men inclusive. So family planning is being broken down today, it's been explained extensively. The bottom line is we want a healthy sexual life. And in the end, you have choices, just like Dr. Adiojo has pointed out, both men and ladies, we have we have choices. We can always engage our, our, our you know our doctors to be able to get you know to know which one is the best for us uh, in our situation. We all have our peculiar situation, and there's no one size that fits all in this situation. And obviously, uh, this the the, the 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 scope is wide. So please engage your doctor, engage family planning clinic. Uh, to get the best for yourself, because you might have certain conditions that you might have a part, you might need a particular type of, you know, uh, family planning um, uh, method, which if you use otherwise, it might actually jeopardize your situation on the other hand. Thank you, Dr. Adil Joe. In the next one minute, please, can you, can you give us the final advice that you have for us as individual and the final one that you have for the, for the nation, because it looks like there's a bit of a of, of chaos, mayhem, in this, in this, in this, in this um, particular area, as a nation, I don't think we've gotten it. We don't mean, I don't think we've even doubled into it. Talk less of getting it right, in all honesty, because there's so much there that is just not available. There's so much information people need. There's so much knowledge that needs to be implanted there. There's so much that our government needs to do in terms of advocacy to get our ladies and our, our family uh, to be able to tap into this. So, what's your final uh, advice? and then suggestion for us individual and as a nation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Graham. My first thing is, uh, uh, let us, like I've said before, if we don't control the, our population to very, very concise and direct effort, family planning, some other things we control. And they have mentioned, if we don't control at this level, there are disasters that will me war that will control the population for us. But at the level that we are in, individuals should take responsibility. I've said it for you to climb on the ladder of success, you need to reduce your baggage. And being able to reduce your baggage that will make you light to be able to climb up, you need to reduce the number of dependents. And to reduce the number of dependents, you need to, and for us to be able to, even be able to protect the health of our women. Having a good sexual relationship, enjoying a good sexual life without guilt or without the fear of pregnancy, we have a lot of work to do. Taking responsibility on from our own, on our own part because we don't have any reason not to take responsibility. And the choices are there for us. 
the choices have been modernized. Family planning method has been refined over the years. The safety profile is better. The, um, I mean, the security is better. And then we also have a high success rate with family planning methods. All of them are there. And then we have our provider to actually help us. But we continue to need, we need a lot of advocacy. The government, the legislature, legislative act, we need a lot of advocacy because as far as I'm concerned, if we have blueprints that are not implemented, it's as if there's no blueprints. Yeah. We need a, a roadmap, a serious roadmap for us to be able to get, I mean, to prevent the a, a, a disaster that can be addressed by simple intervention, such as family plan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here, and uh, we really appreciate your time for the guests. Thank you. This is how far we can go today. Uh, join us again next week when we come with another topic, um, uh, which will be enlightening. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will say bye bye at this stage. Thank you.